This is Joe Costello's WFO Radio Ignition. Covering everything that has wheels, an engine, and a driver. The reason I race is to get the chicks. You know what I mean? <laughs> NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, sports cars, and NHRA drag racing. Hey, guys. Just want to let you know, WFO Rock. WFO Radio is total motorsports. It's just so cool. Fasten your seatbelts. Fire up the ignition and drop the hammer. Yeah, let's do it. Now, here's your host, Joe Costello. WFO, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to WFO Ignition. That is right. The Ignition Show, we are on the air. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different in that I am getting ready to travel to head out to Charlotte, North Carolina for the Carolina Nationals with the NHRA at the same time that Hurricane Michael is tearing its way through the South, heading right towards Charlotte. And so what we have done is we're putting together a show that we're going to touch on everything. We're going to get into a couple of different subjects, but it's going to be Giovanni in Miami on Skype again. Poker guys came in Monday night, and we wanted to wait a little bit later on in the week. Plus, you may recall something big was happening on Monday. We're talking about Yankees socks, and I will address that momentarily. Of course, it'll come up in the sports collision, but we will discuss it uh, throughout the show. And I'll give you my take, okay? You guys know I'm big Yankee fans. I know you're not all New York Yankee fans. I know we have Red Sox fans out there, and so we'll get into it. You deserve to hear me uh, say exactly what uh, went down, in my opinion, in my opinion. I'll give you all of that. But uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you results, and I'm going to discuss what has gone down in Dover. Chase Elliott winning the race. We'll connect with Gio a little bit later. We'll talk about fantasy. We'll talk a little F1. We'll spin the hits here on the WFO podcast. Now, on the NHRA Nitro show, I was telling everybody, I was like, hey, everybody, the Ignition show is wildly entertaining. You guys will love it. It'll be fun. It's like the morning zoo you listen to, except better. And then here we are uh, doing one of these shows. So I'm going to bring it. I'm going to do my best just to uh, be irreverent and have a little fun. Right? Wrong. Wrong. Now, big news today. Big breaking news that Chad Knauss and uh, Jimmy Johnson are breaking up after 17 years. Think about that. Take a second to absorb what that means. That Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss, they have worked together since the first day and that they're going to reshuffle the crew chiefs for two of the four teams at Hendrick Motorsports beginning next year. Johnson's going to be paired with Kevin Meandering, who is currently the crew chief for the Junior Motorsports Xfinity Series car at the 48. And uh, that is just big. And Chad Knauss is going to be the crew chief for the number 24, William Lord Byron. It's going to end the longest current driver crew chief pairing in NASCAR. Now, what do I think about it? Well, I don't have all the information. This is one of those times where Mr. H knows he's there. He's seen it. Sometimes you got to shake things up, separate them, and maybe they'll come back together. Who knows? Jimmy and Chad will go down as one of the greatest combinations in the sports history, team owner Rick Hendricks said in a release provided by the organization. They defied the odds by performing at a championship level for longer than anyone could have possibly imagined. What they've accomplished together has been absolutely remarkable and will be celebrated for generations. This has been an incredible storybook run. And allow me to add, they will sing songs about them generations from now. Jimmy and Chad. And what can you say to that other than, okay, if Mr. H says do it, then you do it. Simple as that. He senses something. He wants to shake him up. He wants to get him going. He's going to separate him. He's going to see how it goes. He's going to use Chad to help uh, William Byron. And Jimmy is going to be Jimmy with Kevin Meandering. And will he get the eighth championship or will this just be the the end? I don't know. Not to mention Lowe's is gone. A lot of reasons. I don't think it is terrible. I don't think it is terrible at all. I think it is what it is. And this is how big decisions are made. You go and you push and you try. And in the end, you just do the best you can as much as you can. And so Jimmy Johnson, Chad Canals, breaking up. 
Now let's talk about the race win out there in Dover. Pretty interesting. First of all, Chase Elliott advances. The standings, Chase Elliott, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Joy, fifth, Kurt Busch, sixth. These are standings now. Brad Keselowski, seventh, and Ryan Blaney currently holding the cutoff spot. On the outside, not in, Eric Almarola, Clint Boyer, Kyle Larson, and Bowman the Showman. But it's pretty close. They're just, uh, you know, 10 points back, Almarola and Boyer. 12 points back for Kyle Larson, all very doable. And Alex Bowman, 34 points back. So that is going to be a bit of a challenge for Alex Bowman. In fact, I'm pretty confident to say it ain't happening. Not happening. Now, they are headed to Talladega this week, and I guess everybody else could be involved in a horrific incident that takes out everybody, although we did have that at the Roval and we did have that at Dover. Big crashes that knocked out a lot of people. But, I don't know, the 1000bulbs.com 500 at Talladega, 2 o'clock on Sunday. But here are the results for Dover. Did you watch Daryl Gwynn do his Facebook Live? How cool was that? It was very, very cool. You know, we got to get Daryl on to debrief on that. But NHRA back-to-back weeks, I can tell you, it is a very great challenge getting everything together, hustling through, taking care of all the WFO stuff. But I, I, you know, digress. I'm not here to complain. I'm going to drag races this weekend. Hopefully, you never know. Chase Elliott gets the win. Denny Hamlin second. And Joy, Joey Logano coming home third. A race that Chase really was able to steal after that late race incident. But bottom line, a win is a win, and Chase is moving on. Let's hear what Chase Elliott had to say. Yeah, everybody said, you know, he <clears throat> struggled for, obviously, a couple of years to win a race. And they said, I want to get one. They all come easier. And I was like, ah, there's no way that's true at all. So um, certainly didn't come easy today. And, and just uh, and so glad we could get a win. You know, last fall was such a tough race uh, for me. You know, as I've said to a bunch of people, it was probably the toughest day of my career. And, and when you have those hard days, you know, that certainly makes you learn and, and it gives you no choice but to grow up a little bit, you know. So, um, yeah, I think the biggest thing is when you have days like that, you're just proud of the opportunity to be able to come back and, and be in a position to do it again. I mean, just for the thing to work out, to have a chance to win today is crazy, uh, as is a year later. So, um you know, this is an important race to be able to move on huge. Uh, the same thing was riding on it last year and realized we missed out on a hell of an opportunity. So, you know, just to be able to come back and kind of put those things behind you and, and prove that you belong is, is very gratifying. And I am um, just thankful for the opportunity. Chase Elliott after his second win of the season. Danny Hamlin second. Joey Logano third. Eric Jones fourth. Kurt Busch fifth. Kevin Harvick sixth. Austin Dillon, 7th. Kyle Busch, 8th. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., ninth, Daniel Suarez, 10th. 11th through 20th. Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, Eric Almirola, Brad Keselowski involved in an incident. Uh, that caught up Martin Truex, Jr. as well, 15th. Paul Menard, 16th. Ryan Newman, 17th. Jamie McMurray, 18th. William Lord Byron, 19th. And Matt Kenseth, 20th. And now everybody else. Everybody else. Regan Smith, A.J. Allmendinger, Bubba Wallace, David Reagan, Chris Busher, Michael McDowell, Matt DiBenedetto. Going to be driving the Levine car next year. Casey Kane is out for the rest of the season, having some health issues. Not cleared. Bowman the Showman, 28th. Ty Dillon, 29th. Corey LaJoy, 30th. Jeffrey Earnhardt, J.J. Yaley, Landon Castle, B.J. McLeod, Clint Boyer, Jimmy Johnson, Ross Chastain, Harrison Rhodes, and Tim A. Hill. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson just having a nightmare year. I was wondering, you know, are they going to be able to, uh, you know, win a race, win a couple of races after coming up short? And instead, they went right to the garage. How terrible is that? And that uh, that's why it's just a, it's a breakdown. It's off the rails. I know what, what that's like. Yankee fans are kind of feeling like that. And in fact, what am I doing? I'm getting a text by what? Steve, the trucker, sending me a meme. Yankee fans claim they wanted Boston the ALDS determined that was a lie, and it's a meme with, uh, I don't know who that is, Maury Povich, right? That is not true, and allow me to delve into it at least, first of all. Here's the thing, Yankees-Red Sox. It is the rivalry. There's all kinds of great rivals, rivalries, Texas and Oklahoma. We were going out there while we were at the Texas Motorplex. Everyone was keeping up on that. The Canes versus Florida State, that's a great rivalry. The Canes came all the way back. They won it. Turnover chain, all of that. 
But Yankees Red Sox, I think, is the benchmark for rivalries. I think it really is. And the Red Sox had a better team throughout the regular season. We were not as good as they were, but still a very good team. So we're able to win the one game playoff and then play against Boston. And game one kind of just got out of hand and slipped away. We made a charge and we lost. Game two, we won. Game three, just total annihilation and destruction. 16 to one, they whooped us. And after that game, I'm thinking to myself that, you know, it didn't matter if we gave up two runs, 16 or two, we would have lost. And if you can't hit with runners in scoring position and you're not going up against their number one or their two, you're going up against their three and four pitchers, guys that are good but not great, then it's you. And so here's the deal. I'm just going to lay it out there, all right? The New York Yankees, like it or don't, the benchmark franchise in baseball and probably sports, 27 world titles. The door is opening on a new era, a new run. This is definitely disappointing. Is it a setback? Yes. Did we deserve to lose? Yes. We deserve to lose. Defense, poor. Timely hitting, non-existent. Superstars stepping up. Only a couple. Judge was there. Stanton was terrible. And yet we were still somehow in it until the very last at bat, which I don't quite understand. Pitching, mediocre. Listening to the Yankee fans, top to bottom, everybody is very angry about several things. One, Aaron Boone got outmanaged big time. Nobody wants to say that because they got rid of Joe Girardi for Aaron Boone, who is a rookie. Joe Cora is also a rookie. Well, one of these two rookies is better than the other. Not everybody can never manage a game and just jump in and manage games. The manager matters. And I feel like Aaron Boone was way behind. So New York Yankee fans are thinking about the manager. All right. Did you learn a lesson? Did you learn two starting pitching when CC Sabathia, who is kind of an older guy, is your guy to put a stop to it at the end? He did OK. Boone was a little late giving him the hook. So there are areas that need to be addressed. It was a fun and exciting season. Now the Houston Astros and the Boston Red Sox will play against each other to determine who faces either the Dodgers or the Brewers. We're out. I had a great year. I wouldn't change much. I would change the outcome. Did I feel we were going to go into Houston and take down Verlander twice? No. Do we need to come up with a solution to that? Yes. Are the Yankees going anywhere? No. Are we going to be back next year? Yes. So this is one that got away. Just another one. Are we a complete team? We are not. A lot of errors, a lot of throwing errors, a lot of dropped balls. Gary Sanchez dropping balls behind the plate. Uh, Misses the game-winning grand slam by a quarter of an inch on the bat. Just got under it ever so slightly. Deep fly ball out there to left, and we lose the game. Gleyber Torres, you know, can't beat out a ground ball, but it shouldn't come to that. If it comes to that, you, uh, you know, you deserve to lose and they deserve to lose. That's it. See, the thing about drag racing that has helped me, and I say it all the time, you lose so much in drag racing that you get used to losing. Like, you, you know, you know how to handle it. It's very disappointing, but I can handle it. This is, uh, it's annoying. It's a terrible deal. I think it's easy to see, you know, having your season ended. It's just like loading up after third round. Hey, I was going real good. Semifinals. Man, this was a great race. We had a great shot. No, you don't. You're out. Oh, ouch. The Red Sox played better in every facet of the game. Period. It's really kind of a miracle that we even had a chance with El Gary up there in the bottom of the ninth. And if nothing else, I'm not saying giving the Red Sox fans a scare is as good as winning. It's not. But it's better than that 16-1 to deal. And when El Gary hit that ball, 
he almost changed his name permanently to Gary uh, Effing Sanchez for the next 10 years. But he didn't. He got under it. And that's the thing. We need clutch players. And now everybody's soul searching. And that's it. It's time to uh, debrief. See what happens between Houston and Boston and the Brewers. I can't wait to hear what El, El Gio has to say. El Gio about El Gary. I wonder if he's more or less balanced about it. Everyone is very disturbed. Like, oh, wow. How do you go out like that? Giving up a home run. Britain giving up that home run that turned out to be the game winning run. Couple of couple of deals. Me personally, though, I'll go one step further. Not that you guys care so much about, you know, Yankee crying towel. I thought and still think that getting rid of Joe Girardi move was a huge mistake. And everyone will tell me, well, it has to do with the Sabre metrics. He wasn't a full, uh, in, fully embraced in the Sabre metrics. And, oh, you know, the young guys, they need to be uh, handled in a certain way. And he didn't relate to them. Uh-huh. Okay. If those are the two things, here's my response. And three, he was getting paid $3.5 million. And the Yankees don't want to spend that on a manager. A lot of people think that the Yankees have an endless pocketbook, but actually the Yankees have a diminished salary this year. People don't realize they're under the luxury tax. They broke the chain on that, so it's a victory anyway. But here's the thing. These ball players are all millennials, right? Everybody says everything about millennials. Millennials, oh, you know, they need to... Listen, sometimes people need a little discipline and they need somebody up in their face a little bit and they need a little motivation and to be ready. Otherwise, maybe they're not going to be ready. Maybe they're not going to be ready. Like, maybe they won't know what time the game is. Like, Severino didn't know what time the game was. Comes out at 7.30. Game's at 7.40. Gets, like, four pitches, and he's got to be warm. Terrible stuff. Did you know that? Probably not, because you didn't spend all day listening to WFAN. But I have the past three days. Yeah, the 16-1 to game. Sevy Thought it was, like, an 8-10 start. Oops. Whose fault is that? Aaron Boone, how do you put someone in a position that they've never held and they don't know what they're going to do? That's a question. That's a that's a question. And I think it was obvious. Now, will we learn from this? Yeah, we'll learn. We'll learn. Can you learn everything there is to learn about this situation from one divisional series? I don't think so. So Joe Girardi's life of managing well, it hasn't been that long, going back to, you know, 2009, 2008. I think some things were learned in that period. So should we bring back Joe Girardi? That's not going to happen. That I can already tell that it's not, not in the books. What they're going to do is they need to get another starting pitcher, and they need to make some adjustments, and they need to figure out what they're going to do. Finally, Stanton getting ripped. Oh, my gosh. Getting ripped. They're attacking this guy. He struck out with the bases loaded a couple of times. He did not come through one time, not once. Judge is coming out. He's doing that, working walks. All kinds of stuff is happening. He's doing what you got to do. The Red Sox have got that uh, thing, do damage, right? That's what they did. They did damage. Small ball. The Yankees relying too much on the home run. They're a home run hitting team, and that's great, but only in the context of everything else. You still got to manufacture runs. You got to play good defense. And they didn't play their best stuff. And the Red Sox beat them and they're moving on. Now, where's the solace? 27 World Series championships. There's the solace. Best team in the history of baseball. Bar none. Nobody's close. Go out and win like 10 more and you're not even close. So, you know, and yeah, it's uh, got to be very annoying to people. Wow, you Yankee fans, you get to fall back on your greatness. Yes, yes, that's exactly that's exactly right. We get to fall back on our greatness, Steve the Trucker. We get to fall back on the fact of pure and total superiority to every other team in the league. And you might not like it, but you better learn to love it because it's the best thing going today. Woo! Says the Yankee fans. Even the day after we got wiped, you cannot and will not ever change that fact. That Yankee domination of this sport and of this league will continue well into the next century. And watch out, man. Watch out. Watch out. Because, all right, I'm, 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 we'll wait till Gio to come on. I'm getting into a thing here. I'm yelling at you guys. 
<laughs> I'm yelling at you guys. Did I tell you Talladega is this weekend? No, most importantly, listen, I know I just yelled at you and I want to make it right. If you would like a pair of tickets to Homestead Miami Speedway, for Ford Championship Weekend, we got tickets for the Camping World Truck Series race, the Ford EcoBoost 200. We have got tickets for the Xfinity Series finale, the Ford EcoBoost 300. And we have got tickets for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series finale, the Ford EcoBoost 400. Tickets are going fast because people are letting us know. People uh, that are letting us know, then they can use it. Elephant racers can use them. He's coming. Everyone's coming down. So if you want to come down to Homestead Miami Speedway, your travel is your business. Your lodging is your business. We got tickets for you. You can get tickets to the race and come out and associated with all that stuff. We have fun. We usually get together for a couple of cocktails. We sit in the grandstands Friday night for the Camping World Truck Series race down there at the end of the front stretch and uh, enjoy. It's under the lights. It's a great time. And we are going to have a great time. And Ken, Ken, who is going to be there inside the uh, the uh, the chalet area, who's been calling the Skype line. That is great, buddy. I'm excited. I'm fired up. I made friends with a guy in there and he's like a, he became a WFO listener because I work in the chalet area during the race. That's like the super VIP, extreme VIP at Homestead Miami Speedway. It's a package you can get. It's kind of cool. You get to go in there and there's prizes. They make drivers in there, all that stuff. But anyway, and he says, let's get hyped up about Homestead. I am hyped up about Homestead, Ken. I am hyped up about Homestead. It is going to be great. And for me, it's the end of the season. Like, I get to enjoy. Enjoy. So, Joe at WFORadio.com, if you can use a pair of tickets for four championship weekend. Good stuff. Now, right now, though, I want to tell you about Audible.com slash WFO Ignition. Start your free trial. Membership includes one free audiobook a month, exclusive sales, 30% off all regularly priced audiobooks. Audible content includes unmatched selection of audiobooks, audio uh, shows, news, comedy, content from leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers. That's what I consider myself. I know you're probably like, this is not that entertaining. Magazine and newspaper publishers and business information providers. I like that one. How about the Dow? What happened? Buying opportunity. That's my move. Free apps for iPhone, iPad, Android. Your library is accessible at any time. And there's the great listen guarantee. If you didn't like it, if you thought it was bad, you can swap it. You don't have to own that bad book like you do in your regular library. Unlike a streaming rental device, Audible, you own your own books. So get in there. Audible.com slash WFO Ignition. Start your free trial. WFO listeners, start your free trial. And bounce around and check it out. Listen to some uh, audiobooks on audible.com and get in there and l- let us know what you're listening to. And I think it's great. And I'm in the same boat. I'm going to be on a plane. That is my plan, my intention. And listening to various stuff is a great way to get the job done. Audible.com slash WFO Ignition. There you go. Thank you very much in advance for trying it out. Now, we do have other sponsors as well, and I will tell you about them a little bit later on in the show, but they make it all possible. All right, when we come back, we're going to break down the 2019 New York Yankee lineup. And the, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What we're going to do is we're going to talk fantasy and Formula One because Lewis Hamilton has just blown it wide open now because uh, Sebastian Vettel. Uh, spun out, trying to make a move. But that's not our prime focus anymore. Our prime focus is now Haas F1 versus Renault. And I think this is something that the entire WFO universe can get behind. Because we have closed up the points lead to just eight. And we have made a big deal about what what it would be for Haas to beat Renault. And so we're going to focus on that. Plus, we'll talk a little more about Jimmy Johnson. We'll get Gio on here to do Sports Collision. All that is coming up a little later in the show. We'll be back after this. This is WFO Radio. Hey, everybody. How do you start your day? You started off with a little coffee. 
And do you want something cheap and vacuum packed with garbage? Do you want to pay for a retail coffee? It's like eleven dollars. Or do you want something that is good, like Rodax Coffee and Grills.com? Join the Rodax Army, WFO users and listeners know all about it. Over 40 grades to choose from. This is roasted fresh for your order, not to mention hot sauce, spice rub. You got to call Marvin, get on the phone line, or go to the website, RodaxCoffeeAndGrills.com. Check it out. That's RodaxCoffeeAndGrills.com. Start your education at full speed with the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. Accelerate your career as a high-performance engine builder with classroom instruction and practical hands-on experience in the lab, on the dyno, and at the track. In addition to the block, head, and CNC programs, Sam now offers motorsport, EFI tuning, and an Associates of Applied Science degree. And Sam is a military-friendly school, approved to train veterans and other eligible persons under the GI Bill. Start your education at full speed. Go to samtech.edu today. Hey, racers and race fans, I want to tell you about the motorsports guys. Terry McMillan from Elkhart, Indiana, has got a new venture, and we want you to hit the website at motorsportsguys.com. It's going to be a one-stop shop. They're going to have it all, but most importantly, oil, Amelie, better than it has to be since 1903, available at motorsportsguys.com. Check it out. Bookmark it, motorsportsguys.com. Terry McMillan stepping up as a supporter of WFO Radio. Check them out, motorsportsguys.com. WFO Radio is brought to you in part by Frank Holly's Drag Racing School, the dragster adventure at frankholly.com. Catspotlitter.com. Got to check them out. And, of course, think about getting a cat. There's so many little kitties out there that need a home. They need a home. But it's the litter. No, now you've got catspotlitter.com. So check it out. Cat Spot Litter, new supporter of WFO Radio. Subscribe to WFO Radio on iTunes. Never miss a show. And don't forget to write a review. WFO. Hussey Performance Copper Head Gaskets. You got to call David directly. 724-318-8292. Hussey Performance Copper Head Gaskets for you engine builders out there. These guys are supporting WFO. Check them out. It is HusseyPerformance.net. This is Sean from Traverse City, Michigan. You ever get done with an episode of Ignition or Nitro and say, man, that's a good job. I'd like to give them a pat on the back and a cold beer. Well, with Patreon, you can. So send that drink down to Geo and Joe. Now, back to WFO Radio Ignition. Ignition, baby. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hawkinstuff says he's working on some new... Uh... Some new rejoins and intros and promos and all of these things. We'll see if it all happens. I think that will be great. That will be great. I will be thrilled uh, to mix it up. And if you're a new listener, welcome. The show isn't always this way, though. It's not always this way. Normally, Giovanni in Miami, right here in the studio, bantering back and forth. Great stuff. Today, we're going to get him on Skype at some point. And you might be wondering, well, where is he? Why don't you have him on Skype? And I'll, I'll tell you, here's the deal, is that Giovanni, over the past couple of weeks, has been extremely busy in that uh, his little boy, the Gray, involved in baseball, baseball, followed by playoff baseball, and New York Yankees baseball. Everything stopped. Everything has to stop. Now that it's over, everything can resume. Resume again. Begin. And so... With me taking an early flight out to Charlotte, in theory, I had to just go, man. The show's got to start. We're going to get Gio in at the end, and it's going to be like the great return of Giovanni in Miami. Now, let me tell you about our great sponsors before we go any further, before we dive into this fantasy and Haas F1 and all of that stuff. The 2019 NASCAR rules package, 550 horsepower. There's a lot going on. It's uh, silly season time. All very interesting going to be pushing those free tickets, but like HussyPerformance.net. I met David Allen. There's David Allen Jr. and there's David Allen. Sean Bellamere wins top alcohol funny car out there in Texas. There was a bunch of stuff going down. It was a shame that it rained on us, but in the winter circle, they're all getting their cowboy hats fitted and made, and I met David, and I'm just thrilled. And I really hope that we've got some engine builders and shop owners and people that use copper performance head gaskets for whatever they're doing that will use Hussy Performance. Go to HussyPerformance.net. Most accurate on the market. Catspotlitter.com. You guys got cats. Stop with the regular stuff. Get the cat spot. 
Now, I don't know what to say. I am trying to touch all the touchstones with you folks. And the one that I think is the best is that you just order it on the, online and it shows up in the mail at an interval that is correct for the amount of cats that you have. And the fact that they support WFO and that they support drag racing and that it's better product. All of those things should really have you motivated to go to catspotlitter.com. They're helping Scott Palmer. They're sponsoring him. You are a sponsor of the team by getting catspotlitter.com. And if you don't have a cat, you can get magic dry. Like Bobby Graham. Yeah, I hung out with Bobby Graham and Marvin Rodak. I had big plans to get Marvin Rodak on the show and to talk about his great experience working as a crew member on Mark Billington's car, top alcohol funny car out there at the Texas Motorplex, the huge fan fest. We had a bunch of people. Derek was out there. They were wearing their Carlos Hawken stuff designed shirts. John was out there, like real listeners, WFO listeners walking into the place. It was just awesome. I had plans to go into all of that, but the back-to-back NHRA races, making it a great challenge. So we'll do that another time. But I want to thank all of those folks for coming out and hanging out at the Fan Fest. Like real fans, good people, great stuff. And the moving it to the, the, the Tracks Fan Fest, I think, was the right move. It was really good. Marvin Rodak and Rodak's Coffee and Grills.com. Get on there. Get yourself some holiday packs. Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School, the Dragster Adventure. That's one that I would love for all of my listeners to do. I know it's a little, you know, it's not buying a bag of coffee, but it's an experience you'll have for a lifetime. And so send one of your loved ones or many of your loved ones to it. Or treat yourself. Either way. Samtech.edu. How about the Samtech Factory Stock Showdown Final Rounds? How about Leah Pritchett getting the win over Kevin Skinner, winning the last three races in a row? Archie Cohn, Stephen Bell coming up just a little bit short. Aaron Stanfield. I went by and saw Aaron after it was all over because they worked their tails off, man. They worked their tails off. Um, Many, many cars. And he had the best shot at Leah. And she squeaked by him with her best run of the weekend, 807. She just used it at the right time. He left first, put up, I think it was a 13 or a 14. She was a 7. She got by. That's it. What can you do? They did everything they could. But Leah Pritchett and Kevin Helms got the win. If you haven't listened to last week's show, you should definitely go back and listen to Kevin Helms. He was great. But samtech.edu, you can become a high-performance engine builder. You can learn to use a CNC machine. They got it going on. Motorsportsguys.com. Terry McMillan, last week was a really good week for WFO sponsors like Hussey Performance winning top alcohol funny car, Sam Tech having their whole championship go down, and motorsportsguys.com, Terry McMillan making the final round. You should get your next oil change, at very least, at motorsportsguys.com and add the Vegas Win Tribute hat to your purchase. Use the promo code WFO and it'll be free. And get yourself a free hat. Amelie is better than it has to be. They've got all kinds of stuff on there. They've got filters. Get your whole deal. Go to motorsportsguys.com. Aerospacecomponents.com. Kim Cussie and her team working very hard to put out some of the best brakes and components in the business. If you've got a hot rod, a street rod, a race car, it's one of the choices that the best in the business use. Go to aerospacecomponents.com. Hanks Defer's Metalworking Lubricants. This is one where they're going to be at the PRI show. And we are encouraging all of our WFO radio listeners to go by their booth at the PRI show. See Antron Brown and Tommy Johnson. See Matt and Zach Sackman. Check out their simulators. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to pass by the booth as well. Hanks Defer's Metalworking Lubricants. And finally, audible.com slash WFO Ignition. There you go. The sponsors that make it all possible here on WFO Radio. Wow. The 2019 rules package. Are you up on this? I think it's kind of interesting in that um, horsepower target goal of 550 horsepower. First of all, it will not affect the Daytona 500. Daytona 500 is going to be run with the traditional restrictor plates. But do you realize this weekend and the Daytona 500 are the last FFRR races? Restrictor plates are going to be gone I know, it's kind of a mind freak. What? 
they're going to use a combination of a small tapered spacer to reduce engine horsepower to a target goal of 550 horsepower and aero ducts to foster tighter racing on the majority of super speedways uh, measuring longer than a mile. The features will be in place for 17 of 36 races, except the 2019 Daytona 500, which will run with traditional restrictor plates. Five other races will be run with the smaller spacer, but without the ducts. And this is something they've been working on. They've gotten to the point where they feel like this is going to make exciting racing. And okay, let's go with it. I'm used to changing packages so much that let's keep going. Let's keep evolving. Let's keep getting it going. The spoiler is going to be eight inches tall by 61. So remember, they went tall. They went short. Get rid of the downforce, increase the downforce. Now they're back to more downforce. They're going to use the taper spa- tapered spacer, either uh, 1.18 or 0.92, depending on the track. The radiator pan is going to be 37 inches wide in the front and tapered down to 31 inches. The splitter is going to be two inches of overhang. And the aero ducts or block off brake ducts, depending on the track. So there you go. That is the 2019 combination, and what will I say uh, other than the new configuration looked pretty good at the All-Star Race and in the Xfinity Series. This package taking cues from that. And you can read about it uh, you know, everywhere that you read about NASCAR. That was coming out a little bit uh, right towards last week. Good for them. Let's hope it works. The... Uh, the idea that people are just, you know, fleeing NASCAR, I, I'm not taking offense to it, but either you enjoy the racing or you don't. What is it? And I enjoy the racing as much as I can. I want to watch and see what's going on. And they're very smart. These people are very smart. We've had the the, uh, the Slugger Labby now works out there for Toyota, and he is on the NHRA schedule. He's out there every week for the most part. And so I've had got to have some good and in-depth conversations with him about many aspects and elements of both styles of racing. This guy is unbelievably smart. It is really interesting. All right, let's get into the fantasy results. Should I wait for Geo for the fantasy results? No, let's not. No, let's not. We're not going to do it. All right, the weekly winner for the Gander Outdoors 400 as Chase Elliott gets his second win of the season and is now rolling. That's it. All of a sudden, Chase, he's the real, the real deal. That Gander Outdoors 400. Dover, baby, Dover. Who gets the win? Team Gray, 337 points. That's Gio's little boy. How wonderful is that? My little buddy goes out there and gets the win. Team Gray. Who do you have? He had Kevin Harvick. He had Chase Elliott. He had Kurt Busch. He had William Lord Byron. That's a good team. And goes out there and gets the job done. Is that his first win? I don't know. I don't know. Team Gray getting the win. Good job, Gray, if you're out there listening. Good job, buddy. Second, NHRA nut. NHRA nut. They are second. I think NHRA nut sent me an email a while ago about something he was confused about. Maybe I had misreported uh, something. NHRA nut. Second, 328. Third, Mr. Fantasy NASCAR. Watch out, everybody. Here comes Chad Robb, 326. Fourth, Stubo. Super Gas Crew Chief, 318. I wonder if they're going to be out there at Z-Max. Fifth, Bulls Wool from down under, 316. Sixth, Highline Real Fine, 315. Seventh, Elephant Racers, 314. Eighth, Driving Hard, 306. Ninth, Hockey Kid. Man, love Hockey Kid. He's not a kid anymore, but he's doing real well. Ninth, tied with Hockey Kid. New Hampshire Bucknut, 442, 305. And then 11th, Miss J48. Twelfth, WFO Joe. That's me. That's where we'll end right there. All right, 13th, Hockey Dad. I scored 295. Who do I have? I had Harvick. I had Kurt Busch. I had Ricky Stenhouse. I had Bowman the Showman. Finished 28th. Alex Bowman caught up in that wreck. That's the one that really sunk my battleship. There you go. But let's get into the overall. This is what everybody wants to know. Talk to Bobby's Bug Barn out there. Bobby was out there and gave me this fantastic hat. The Graham, uh, what is it? Farm? It's not right here. But yeah, give me and Geo each a cool hat, which was cool. Lowe's Chingon still leads. 51 points ahead of the Bug Barn. 99 points 
ahead of Gio in Miami, who has surpassed Mr. Fantasy NASCAR, who climbs back up to fourth. Wow. Wow. This is getting crunch time, baby. Crunch time. Lowe's Chincones actually has an opportunity to have his Red Sox win the World Series and get on the trophy. Increíble. Craig and Newhall, fifth. Black Falcon, sixth. Seventh, Youper one. Elephant Racers, eighth. Ninth, Miller Man. And tenth, Day Racing, 21. All within 210 points, and I really and genuinely believe that any one of those teams is still absolutely in the mix. It's very tight. Very tight at the top. Someone could, you know, just nail a team down there at tenth. You get a big day. High 380, you're going to get up there. Now on the fives. 15th, Junior 24-48, behind Birita and ahead of Bulls Wool. 20th, Easy E-009, behind DRT Girl and ahead of Black Ice. 25th, Stubo, Super Gas Crew Chief. 25th, up four positions, 490 out of the lead. 30th, Patrick the Webmaster, 585 out. And you see, every five, it's almost 100 points. 35th, the Tennessee Money Man and the Dirty Hippies are nose to tail. 34th, 35th, Hockey Dad's 36th, and WFO Joe up six positions to 39th now, surpassing Gary Corbett and Spider Monkey Racing. Surpassing him. Surpassing Team Gray. Team Gray up 12 positions, by the way, 41st. We're all right there in a nice little draft. Brian Spink, 38th. Well, let me just start with the Dirty Hippies. 34th, Dirty Hippies. 35th, Tennessee Money Man. 36th, Hockey Dad. 37th, Low Blinker Fluid, which I think is Mrs. Money Man, if I remember correctly. 38th, Brian Spink. 39th, WFO Joe. 40th, Grammy Award winner Gary Corbett's Spider Monkey Racing. Then DRT99 and Team Gray are tied. So that is a huge pack of WFO insiders that I aim to surpass. Now, there is a huge gap between WFO Joe in 39th and the Dirty Hippies in 34th. A massive gulf. I am 735 points behind, and Rich is 598 points behind. So my math says that's 137 points. You know what? Very doable. Very doable. Watch out now. Look out, Rich. Here it comes. 50th, Rich and Saugus. Rich and Saugus called the show last week. That was a great show. A lot of callers. Barbecue Bob, 55th, 60th, Intimidator Harley, 65th, Catch Me, 70th, Growl Guy, and that's it for people. That, you know, they're, it's, they're thousands and thousands of points behind. So set your teams. Don't mess up. Los Chingones, Giovanni. Giovanni and Los Chingones are in a battle for the greatest fantasy player that has never won the championship. Every year, they're in the top five. How did how did Rich York win four of these championships? That is the question. That is the question. All right, there are your fantasy league results. There was not a change at the top, so we did not have to have our sound effect, right? We did not have to have the sound effect. Now, this week is Dega, and I'm very excited for it. Of course, we'll be in Charlotte. But we're going to have a good old time uh, out there. If you're in the Charlotte area, of course you want to come out. But this Hurricane Michael is going right through that area. Hurricane Flo just went through that area. So these people are kind of getting a double whammy. And I don't know what's going to happen. From what the weather report has said, this thing is going to be out to sea by Friday morning. Oh, what's this? Who's out there on the WFO line? Hello? Hello, and welcome to Movie Phone. What time is uh, Solo playing? Please press 1 for Han Solo. Beep. 12 o'clock, 220, 450, 650, and 9 o'clock. IMAX Movies. Two o'clock. Beep. Eight o'clock. What's up, Giovanni in Miami? 
Well, all right, all right, all right. All right. So here he is. He's on. We're well into the show. We're very deep into the show. You have got a huge deep, responsibility. Like deep undercover. Deep, deep, deep undercover. We have uh, already discussed Chase Elliott. We've already. I've given my uh, New York Yankee post mortem. Uh, we'll do the rest in your stuff in Sports Collision. Um, we talked about the Hendrick crew chief changes and that Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canals are being broken up after 17 years. We talked 2019 rules package. We talked fantasy league results. Does Team Gray know that he won the week? Yay! Is that the Gray? Gray, you're making your first How appearance you? on. Hello, you won. You did it. Is that the first time you've won? Um. Yes. Well, congratulations. That's a huge victory. Do you know what he's talking about? No. Well, I explain to him what he won, Uncle Joe. You I, won the week in fantasy. You it won the, the week in fantasy. You got the highest score. What are you kidding? You're accepting congratulations. You don't know what I'm telling you. 337 points, Gray. You won the week. First yeah. place. What do you have to say about that? I win money. No, you don't you win do money. You do not win money. Nobody wins you win money. Pride, and you get to brag, and you get to be. Yeah, I love bragging. <laughs> there you go. Ah. All right, go. It's past your bedtime. Out of here. Okay, I'm gonna do my hair, and then I'll do it. You know. Well, all right. All right. How about that? Just That's good. Like a million things at me. I don't even know where to begin. First of all, you just glossed over that the band is being broken up. That's crazy. That's no, crazy. I didn't gloss over it. We had a nice in-depth discussion about it. You just weren't involved. We talk about packages too much. We talked about the package. Yeah. It's out there. That's ridiculous, first of all. I, I, I can't believe that they have decided to break up the band. Like, it, I, it's beyond comprehension. I'm for it. I don't know what reason or excuse or what, you know, I don't know what drugs are on over there at Hendrick, but this it makes no sense to me. This is... It's gone stale, it's, man. It's gone stale. Listen, they're shaking it no, up. No, it's not gone stale. It's gone it's stale. That's not how it works. Yeah. It's gone stale. Listen, here's what's going to happen, okay? They're going to go. It's like uh, they're on a break. They're going to go. They're going to work with these other people, and they will have, like, a, an epiphany and either get back together. It's kind of like Ross and Rachel. They're going to either get back together or they're going to have sex success apart. Excuse me. Did I say that? They're going to have sex. They're going to have success apart. Is that spelled S-E-X-C-U-S-S? I think that Mr. H is doing the right thing. They have not performed. Oh, I disagree. They I didn't even get out of the anymore. garage. They didn't even get out of the garage this race. Well, the, the, look, that's... No, there's I, something I, to I, it. I tell you, that's not a long view of things. I, I totally disagree. Long view? They've been together this for 17 years. How much longer could the view this be? It would be like the Patriots firing Bill Belichick. It makes no sense. No one's being fired. It's just personnel moving around just to try to, like... Re uh, reignite a spark. Look, I trust Mr. Hendrick. I think he's got all kinds of information that we don't have. We don't know. Maybe there's some sort of personal thing going on that we don't know. There's like many there's layers. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I have it on good information that Mr. Hendrick is thinking of. He's got one foot out the door, and the next person in charge of Hendrick Motorsports is going to be Dale Jr. Jeff Gordon. Wow, that would be great. Yep. I'm just telling you, I don't know. I heard that. I heard those rumblings. If you would have heard this week's post-race press conference, you might have heard where Mr. Hendrick it actually let it slip that something about retirement and that he's been trying to talk Jeff into coming in. Well, that will be great. You know, who knows? Who knows? I don't know why. You're just like throwing a nugget out there. That's good. That's good. I, I, but now since nugget. you missed all that stuff, we're about to advance into the world of Formula One. Oh, really? Do we have to talk about Formula One? Yeah, no. Another I'm... miserable weekend for Ferrari. Ferrari fail again. Strategy fail. Can't even get out of qualifying with the right strategy. On the wrong tires again. Mercedes comes out, gets on the top of the board. They put a fast lap. Stuff happens. Ferrari gets caught with their pants down. I don't know what it is that's going on there. I totally understand why Arriva Bennett is losing his stuff. And he said this is unacceptable. I got the feeling heads are going to roll over there. I, you know, Seb, another mistake in the race. He, I don't want to say it, but in the end, this was a, a neck and neck race 
just, what, six, seven races ago. And since then, Lewis has dominated, taking complete control. The man is a machine, does not m- make mistakes. Seb, whether it's the pressure, whether it's he's trying too hard, I don't know what it is. Now, I'm not trying to take away the guy is a four-time champion. We know his skill quality. But Lewis is, in my opinion at this point, is just a little bit better. He doesn't make mistakes under pressure. I, I kind of feel, and by the way, Lewis, a total class act. If apparently, Seb was getting ripped in the media, and he came out and said that you unqualified media personnel who have never driven a car have no idea what it takes to do what we do and no idea of the pressure that we are under, and Sebastian has handled it great. And yes, we are only human. We make mistakes. You have no idea what it's like to drive one of these cars. And he went out and stuck up for, for Seb. So on top of the fact that the man is a machine and makes no mistakes, he's a total class act on top of that. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm sure Seb doesn't want to have to be defended by him. And yeah, they got behind in qualifying. Uh, most importantly, I'm kind of over it. You know, I'm over that. I'm focused well, in a different area. My focus like is in a different area. It's over. It's done. My focus is on Haas F1 versus Renault. That's it. That's my focus. And Renault has uh, slipped a little bit. And Roman Grosjean was actually able to finish uh, eighth. I believe started fifth, finished eighth, gained some points. And now Haas F1 is now only eight points behind Renault. And absolutely within striking distance. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe they can get up there and and take that uh, spot in the Constructors' Championship. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Imagine that if Haas can move up to fourth as being the best of the rest. I have just popped up the Formula One construction in their in their, and in their third season. There's a clear gap now between Renault, Haas, and McLaren in sixth. This is the Haas F1 you know, report. McLaren and Force India are battling for sixth, and Renault and Haas are battling for fourth. Unbelievable! It's unbelievable. Here are the results. It really is. This it's, is a startup team just a couple years ago. Nobody thought that they could do this. Let's give the results. A and bunch then of we're Americans gonna, that don't know what they're doing in F1. NASCAR uh, technology, uh, you know, like people. It, it's just insanity. Lewis Hamilton, Botas 1-2, Verstappen 3rd, filling out the podium. Ricardo 4th, Kimi 5th, Vettel 6th. Vettel got pinched by, uh, you know, trying to do a move on Verstappen and ended up spinning out and r- rallied to get 6th, really. Uh, Sergio Perez, 7th, Roman Grosjean, 8th, Esteban Ocon, ninth, and 10th, Carlos Sainz. Um, you might be thinking about Kevin Magnuson. He had a, a problem in the early lap, opening lap, and that knocked him out of the race. So there is your results from the Japanese Grand Prix. And now the constructors. Let's dive into that. Mercedes, 538 points, pretty much over. I mean, not exactly over. over. If they don't show up, then uh, there may be a lead change. But Ferrari is second, 460. Third, Red Bull, 319. So the big three, a 500, a 400, and a 300. Then the best of the rest. This is the battle we're talking about here. Renault is fourth. Fifth is Haas. Sixth, Renault. Seventh, no, Force McLaren. India. Uh, McLaren, Renault, excuse me. Um, seventh, Force India. Eighth, Toro Rosso. Ninth, Sauber. Tenth, Williams. So think about it. Take a second to just think about it. This is an exercise in nationalism. Okay? You believe America is the greatest country in the world because we have freedom, because we have a great economy because we innovated these fantastic technologies over the years and you can pick whichever one you want to pick like the assembly line or you know whatever it is the middle class uh, whatever you want to talk about this is america getting involved you remember peter windsor tried to come up with uh you know usf1 and we talked about for many years there wasn't an american f1 team and i talked all the time i was on uh xm how cool it would be for us to get into this international competition of technology and logistics and ability and how exciting it would be. Well, we are in Gene Haas, one of our industrialists who invented these machines, decides he's going to get in it on his own dime and do it his way and talk smack at the beginning. And in year three, 
they're ahead of Sir Frank Williams with Mercedes engines. They're ahead of Sauber with Ferrari engines. I mean, come on. Williams has been bringing up the rear for a while. Yeah, but still, you know, Williams has been doing Formula One for 30 years, man. He, they know how to do and, it. You know, just because you've been doing something a long time doesn't mean make you great at it. No, they were once great. They're the ones that came up with that the whole uh, yes, innovative. They were, but this, is, this has got nothing to do with the Malcolm Gladwell and 10,000 hour rule, all right? Haas should not be able to just jump in and beat Williams, Sauber, Toro Rosso, which is just the Red Bull second team, Force India, the pride of an entire nation of 1.3 billion people using the Mercedes engine. Every single Indian from India, you know, I'm sure they're billions of that billion are somehow heavily involved with Force India. <laughs> None of that is true. McLaren, man. <laughs> McLaren, Renault are all behind. No, Force India is being held back by Mali or whatever his name is, who, who apparently is, VJ is, Mali. is a shady character. No, he's gone. India. He sold that team. And under all kinds of indictment, indictments all over the world. Let's not talk about corruption in India. We know nothing about what we speak. But is there corruption in India? Yes. No, 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 I'm talking about specifically in the the previous owner of the Formula One team. Yeah, VJ Malia. VJ? Yeah, with the Kingfisher beer <laughs> and the airline and all that stuff. Yeah, apparently he's wanted in, in various places. That was a very hush-hush deal. McLaren, man. Yeah, I know. McLaren. <laughs> I understand. How does Haas... Hey, look, these leagues, they don't like to point that stuff out. The NFL made no issue when the owner of the Cleveland Browns, who also happens to own Flying J and Pilot, was under all kinds of indictments here and, you know, and hush, hush paid his fines and everything's okay now. Right. Well, exactly. Everybody knows that uh, the rules are a little different if you're worth, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, sorry. I, I mean, I hate it. I don't think it's right, but that's just the way it is. You can pay a fine where the regular dude goes to jail, but that's a different story. Haas F1. They are fifth battling for fourth best of the rest status with all of these teams and doing well, if that doesn't, if that's not a source of pride for our racing and our technology and our logistics and the ability to build a team, I don't know what is. I don't know what. Why would you not watch the remainder of the Formula One races for this alone? For this alone. Actually, I don't know uh, when I when I uh, had a couple of minutes on my break today at work i was on the social media stuff platforms and i saw there's all kinds of stuff going on with f1 and this esports stuff uh, do you know any of, of do you know what i speak of esports no not really apparently formula one has kicked off this whole e you know you know what esports are e like video games essentially is yeah, what, I what the video way i take it about. i mean maybe you know some one of you wfo listeners out there can correct me if i'm wrong but i believe that esports is video games okay and well, like F1 Gary Corbett, is it the I racing the, the, esport? Is I racing an esport? Absolutely. I All right, here we go. Listen, I got e-sport. it. Wikipedia is going to tell us what's it, what it is. Okay. But F one has begun has begun an esport series, and it, and the whole thing kicked off today, and they were like just all over the Twitter world. It was like number one. Well, it was number two trending behind what's going on with a certain basketball player in Minnesota that might be playing for the Heat soon. But uh, otherwise. This esports thing is is out of control. Esports, also known I, as electronic I, sports, yes, esports, competitive professional video game. Watch other people playing video games are, are a form of competition using video games. Most commonly, esports take the form of organized multiplayer video game competitions, particularly between professional players. Although organized online and offline competitions have been part of video game culture, these were largely between amateurs until the late 2000s, when participation by professional gamers and spectatorship in these events through live streaming saw a large surge in popularity. By 2010, esports was a significant factor in the video game industry, with many game developers actively designing towards a professional esports subculture. Right. So apparently today, Formula One esports, it's like a new branch. It's like a whole new wing. You know how they have F2 and F1? Well, now there's F1 esports. 
Here and it, it kicked off today here it is. because it was all over my 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 Twitter world. Okay, see, I missed that. I was busy listening to New York Yankee Crying Towel on Sports Radio 66, the fan. But Yeah, yeah, I'm not listening to those people. Most of those people calling in over there on those shows like that, the Boomer and Geo show in the morning, yeah. those are a bunch of retard, uh, excuse me, uh, mentally challenged people that have no idea what they're talking about. They call themselves fans. But they they just they're, they're really not. They're just a bunch of screaming homers. Well, that, well I don't you know. know. Fanboys. They're it, fanboys. They're I don't know, fans. man. You're attacking the New York sports fan, man. I don't think that's right. Not in, in general. Any any ignorant fan who just blurts out stuff and has no idea what they're talking about. Those to me, those are fanboys. They're not actual fans. Yeah, but that's not what they were doing. You weren't even listening. You're just spouting out I, stuff I right now. I, I turned it on. Wasn't it earlier today or yesterday? I, I don't need to hear that, dude. Those yeah. people would have no idea what they're talking about. Beningo and Roberts were good. What do you mean? And Francesa is the Pope. What are you talking about? Yeah, is he, does he still fall asleep on the air? Francesa was really good. He was very animated today. He went, yeah, he was, like in 1998. It's 2018 now. What do you mean? This guy just inked a huge deal. You're attacking Mike Francesa? Really? Come on, man. Just because the guy is dude, older. the guy should have stayed retired. What do you mean? He's getting paid huge money. He started his own and, and streaming yeah, thing. A lot of people get paid huge money that don't necessarily, you know, deserve it. You're just talking out of your, uh, where's the button? Out of your rectum. Wrecked them. Yeah, Damn you them are. Killed him. Yeah. You don't know anything about Francesa. My gosh. But anyway, I got it. I got eSports and it's just a splash page, man. It's just a splash page. So can Gary Corbett get in on this? That's what we want to know. Forget about us because it's too late. But let's get Gary Corbett in on this thing. Let's make him our WFO esports racer. Let's get him out there in Formula One. Look here, I'll give you a quick little, uh, a quick little hit from the F1 esports series page. Do it. The waiting is almost over, and the stage is being set on Wednesday, October 10th, which is today. Yeah. At the Gfinity Esports Arena in London, the F1 New Balance Esports Series 2018 gets underway with the first live event. Stars from the F1 world and the gaming world will be in attendance to celebrate the launch of the revamped series, which features official F1 esports teams for the first time. The opening three races of the 10 race pro series will take place on the opening day today with races two and three broadcast live on the official F1 Facebook page between 1900 and 2100 BST, whatever uh, time that is. Something standard time. Right. Maybe British standard time. It is also being broadcast on several TV networks across the world with the inaugural Pro Series capturing the imagination of gamers and motorsports fans everywhere. I Listen, I think it's great. Okay, here we are. Live Pro Series show one. Is it happening now? I don't know. Um, what uh, I think it was earlier in the day. It's a little, you know, it's it's over there. It's five hours later, so I would say it's probably you know, middle of the night now. I can but, tell you, I can tell you a couple of things. That number one, um, I think this sounds like genius. Number two, uh, I don't want to learn all the moves of certain video games. You know, like uh, nowadays, games are very complex, right? But they're very cool. And I the games, the remote controller's got like 18 buttons and right. switches and stuff. Which is why... Gone is the day of the one joystick the and the red button, one button, my friend. The, uh, but I have a PlayStation. You know, it's a PlayStation 3. It's not a PlayStation 4. But I, I was into it. But I always like driving sim games. You know, Gran Turismo, that kind of stuff. Because it's simple. You know, I can do it. I can learn to drive. And I drive. And I have. And I've done it. And it's fun and all that. But these, uh, you know, Assassin's Creed games. You know, the games with stories. First person. Oh, that's shooters kids play now. there's another one it's fortnite is the fortnite all that i'm not i'm not uh i don't do any of those because you got to know too many moves you know like back back circle square triangle back up down l1 r1 and i'm not i'm not going to waste my time learning all of that like how to be uh great at a, a stupid first person shooter uh, I'm not going to do it. There's no way. Oh yeah, well on this board you got to go over to this section and you got to you know summon the uh, you got to the singing bush and summon the invisible swordsman. I'm not going to do that. I cannot do that in my life. I cannot. But I have handed the controller to Carlos Hawkins stuff and had him just play and me just watch the story unfold and things blow up and be, you know him him uh, kill uh, things like it's it is very entertaining. So there's this twitch. 
which is a live streaming thing where people stream their games and people are all over there watching. And the greatest gamers are making money now. And they're their own thing, just like an athlete. Like once upon a time back in the day, the guy who could shoot the basketball could shoot the basketball and make it through the hoop. And then people were like, oh, my gosh, this guy can put the ball through the hoop all the time. We should watch him. And it became the NBA. Well, these gamers, man, they're becoming professional athletes now. And what's crazy about it is this. If you're watching it on a screen. And the car in second makes a great move on the car in first and takes the lead and wins the race. And you're watching on your screen in your house. Does it matter that it didn't really happen? That it's just a game, a simulation? Do you care? Does it matter? And I don't think the answer is, uh, I think the answer is no. I think people just want to be entertained and root for something that they like. And so this whole E thing... It could put all the motorsports out of business because why bother? Just do the game. Wow. I hadn't considered it that way. Madden. There's Madden tournaments. You know, these guys with the Madden tournaments, you remember, uh, you know, they all get together and they play against each other. And no, he- this is no joke. This whole esports movement is out of control. They, they, they show it on ESPN for Christ's sakes. You watch football, right? Okay. Do at, in the end, why do you watch? Um, because we enjoy seeing 300 pound Goliaths slamming into each other at all at, at full speed. But does it matter that they're 300 pounds or does it matter that you just see these big things, uh, running and smashing into each other and meaning it doesn't have to be real for you to enjoy it. It doesn't have to be real. You don't really oh, don't care that the day if we trained a robot to throw the, no. the, the foosball around, I don't think it would be as popular as, as real people. But it's not you know? robots. That's the thing. It, it is real people. They look just like real people. You can't tell the difference. It's just they're not. They're virtual. There's a person controlling the strings, making the plays, making them run. The tackles will be even more vicious. Head, guys, heads can come off now in esports. Anyway, that's my point. I think it's going that uh, that way, especially with race cars. The only thing is you're not competing in an engineering exercise anymore. You're just driving. And where does the performance advantage come from? I don't know. Maybe it's just the driver. Well, thank you for making me aware of that. I appreciate it. Look at this show starts in 27 seconds. I'm going to play. I'm going to play the audio of one of these things. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. Let's see what it says. Esports series, DHL and Fanatec. The Pro Series, Australia, eSports. There's no volume here, guys. Where's the volume? Here it is. Oh, the regular Formula One music. France, Britain. Okay, let's fast forward. Oh, they got a highlight reel for this kid. He's kind of pasty-faced. He's a little chubby. Who is that? That looks familiar. Join the league. Join the movement. Esports. Well, I think it's a, it's a massive opportunity to them, but also the team. If you are going to win, you have to work super hard in order to achieve that. I believe he's going to only get bigger and bigger. Who will become champion in 2018? <laughs> and it's just, you know, that, that's the thing that I don't like about it, is it appears to be an auditorium full of uh, teenage boys. Just like sitting in chairs, watching a couple race, and then getting their turn. I don't know. Maybe I'm against it. Get out there in the real world, kids. Get out there in the real world and play. Put the, put the screens down. All right. Have we done Haas F1 justice? Have we given the Haas F1 the, the report that they deserve and that the WFO universe now knows that this is worth watching every single race? By the way, you know what the next race is? Formula One? Geo, the next Formula One race. Do you know? Yeah, so we should we should we should plan a field trip to Austin. Austin, it, Texas. You have an baby. off week that weekend. Do I? I oh. know it's my son's birthday party weekend, but we could we could ditch all that. Me and you, I I, I can feel it. Let's just Austin. blow off your son's birthday. Yeah, let's do yes. it. Media credentials. I feel it. <laughs> well, one day I would no, love to get out that's there. Not the right thing to do. No, maybe next year. One day I would like to get out there, though. 
just to see it. I absolutely. Well, 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 we don't have to get out there. It's coming here next year or the 2020, year after. 2020. Trust me. Yeah, but I mean, I'd it's like to happen. see code. I'd like to see the circuit of the Americas. There's four races well, left. I United States Grand Prix, Mexican too. Grand Prix, Brazilian Grand Prix, and Abu Dhabi. The coronation of Lewis Hamilton. Let's hope Haas F1 can make oh, a move. Stop that. Oh, it's good. It's good. No, look, you know what? You got to give credit where credit is due. The man has earned his spot. He's got almost an insurmountable lead. It would take two, three failures in the last four races for him to, to lose. And it hasn't happened all year. So what makes us think it's going to happen now? And I'm not going to kick Vettel while he's down. Uh, it's just a sad uh, year. The team, it's a team loss. I think the team has combined. Hey, one more thing. You are in now in third in the overall point standings in the fantasy league. So you Whoa. and low and Bobby's bug barn, uh, low leads. Bobby's bug barn is second and you are third. So just, uh, yeah, but, but I, I while I do want to, you know, I, you know, I hate to brag, but a couple of weeks ago, I was 220 points back. And now I've cut that lead to just under 199 points. But I will say that someone else has been, very hot on my tail in fourth place, you know, coming from like 10 for 12. Or Mr. Fantasy NASCAR. Mr. Fantasy NASCAR is making a dash to the front when it matters. And I'm trying to block him and keep him behind me, but I don't know what's going to happen. Low and Bobby's bug barn have been losing points. I mean, rapidly I am ascending like a Phoenix, but Mr. Fantasy NASCAR is coming towards the front and I will do my best to keep him behind. I know it is my turn legitimately to win the trophy this year because I came in third, second, and this is the year for me to win. Lo, you are going down, my friend. You are not going to be the winner. I could, I, I, I'm telling you now, it's going to be a very disappointing season for the Lowe family. There will be no fantasy NASCAR championship. His team is going down in the playoffs in this next series. Whoa. And he's going to be flying <laughs> this all of a sudden to be- Miss Miriam. And he's going to wish he had stayed on that hiking trip that they're on. <laughs> wow. That's a little harsh. A little harsh and going over the top. All right. So ah. let, let's put that all to bed. And Haas F1 and all of these things all to bed. And now let's, uh, let's delve into. We're not going to make picks this week because, Bob, we don't have the odds. And we'll figure out how to do that at a later time. But right now, I'll send an email in the morning and see if it could get done, and maybe we could just post it on Friday. Exactly, that is exactly like we have right. In the last few weeks, I think that is a great idea. But right now, I think it is time and in the appropriate time to delve into what is known as the sports collision, and I will be playing the sports collision sound effect momentarily as soon as it loads. Sports collision. Yeah, just like that. Sports collision. So the Yankees lost to the Red Sox. It is over. I already gave my, you know, uh, analysis at the start of the show when Steve the Trucker sent me a meme. You know how the non-Yankee fans love when the Yankees lose, and it happens. Uh, it happened uh, every year since uh, 2009. Uh, but this one was a little worse off because we felt like we had a really good team that could do something. But my uh, analysis says this. The Red Sox outplayed us in every single aspect of the game of baseball from, you know, top to bottom. So when that happens and somehow we still had hope going into the final at bats, I don't really understand that. But they waxed us and now they're on to play Houston. No, they did. And they did. And I saw those, you know, those those Red Sox fans you know, gloating online and talking about how they were playing New York, New York, you know, as a troll job. And I don't, I don't understand that. I totally understand why they were playing New York, New York. I don't see it as a troll job. First and foremost, I see it as imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Number one, number two, what song is there about Boston that they would play? No one ever writes any songs about Boston. They have nothing to play. So why wouldn't they play New York, New York? That's all they could do. Whatever. That was a shot at Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge wanted to simulate a Yankee Stadium victory as he walked out of Fenway Park. And so he was playing New York, New York on a speaker. And everybody is trying to take it the wrong way and make it like Judge is a petty person, which is totally not what it was. But whatever. I don't... I don't uh... To the victor goes the spoils, man. They can play whatever music they want. 
That's it. Again, what song is there that talks about Boston and Boston being such a great place? It doesn't exist. What are they going to do? They're going to play Sweet Caroline or some crap like that? Yes. Get out of here. That's of it. Of course, they had no choice but to play New York, New York. It is a tribute to the best city in the world. They know. Okay. And? Anyway, we move on. Yes, the Yankees lost. It is what it is. It's a little disappointing, but the reality is that our team, as great as they are offensively and stacked as it is, it has a lot of flaws. And we are an up-and-coming team with t- playing two rookies in the infield this year and v- with a very flawed pitching staff. Things will only get better, and hopefully someone sends the message to the bean counters that it is unacceptable to be fifth or sixth in, p- in highest payroll. All right? It is time for the Yankees to show their dominance and whip out the printing press and just sign guys. That's it. Well, they can. Don't trade away this young talent. Just bring in some high price money like we always have and dominate the league like we always have. I'm, I'm tired of messing around with these little small market clubs. Enough. Show your dominance. Be, go out there and spend the money. They had to get under the luxury tax. Well, yeah, whatever. No, yeah, man, that was I, a I, huge deal. I'll give you that. But again, I don't want to hear about billionaires being cheap. Yeah, but on this, my sports no, team. but it's the luxury Enough tax. Of that. Just spend the money and win. That's what George always did. These kids of his have no idea what it is that their dad did. George, the Yankees were for fun, for winning for spending the money that he made on a different business. These kids are looking at it as the Yankees are, are, are the money business. They have money businesses elsewhere. The Yankees are to win and spend whatever it takes. That's why we have the Yes Network. That's why we showed the rest of the league what it is to have your own network and to just have a printing press, essentially. The Yankees right? payroll. Enough hun- of the being cheap. Just go out there but and sign not... whoever we need to. And if they don't, if they fail, you send them shipping and you pay them to go away. That's it. That's what we do. That's what the Yankees do. There are. I don't agree. I like I just everybody. I don't agree with There's this uh, perspective. New York Yankees. Yeah. Look, here's the thing. Okay, they had to get under the threshold. Otherwise, their the money compounded. I, I I'll give you that, but I'm tired of hearing that. No, they didn't have to. No, they, they did. Didn't. They did. No, they didn't. You say that, but that's 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 poor man's mentality. I'm sorry. We are not, we are not the Oakland A's. We are not the Kansas City Royals. We are the New York Yankees. Yeah, but you're throwing away money that you could be using on it's players. Helpful. You're just you wasting know what? That's money. The cost of doing business. No, it's not. It's just wasting money. And now that they've had one season that they're under that resets the whole threshold. And so now they have made it possible to do what you want by doing this that they have done. It was actually a great move. The uh, Previously, they were just squandering money, just giving it away. Now that they have been under the luxury tax for a season, they can then go out and do what you want to do. The problem is who, who are the guys that you want to get? And that's always the question. And do you, well, have a you guy? know, if, if Cash wants to talk, we could talk. But again, it's time to do what you got to do and stop messing around. Uh, having for the whole full season, a hundred and eighty seven million dollar payroll and being, I believe, fifth or sixth highest payroll in the league. That's very un New York Yankee like. All right. Listen, so, I'm, if you got a guy that you really want. Definitely get him, but I want to know who the guy is. I just want to throw money at anybody. Who's who are we talking about? Well, we'll see. It, it all depends. There's a certain guys' availability that may or may not opt out of their current contracts. You know, there's still a possibility of. Look, these guys are clearly Ivy League educated, a lot smarter than we are. They get paid to do this kind of stuff. Yes, I have some ideas. 
if Cash wants to wants to speak, we could do a Yankee roll call with Cash and throw out there what we would like the team to the direction that we would like to see the team take. And what direction is that? You know, I'm not beyond doing some crazy stuff and signing, you know, a, a free agent here, maybe working out a deal where we can send this Stanton guy out to LA where he's from and he might be happy out there and you and want to spend that money Stan. wisely. You want to... I, I, I want to give him another chance. Obviously, we have no choice at this point because he's got a full no trade clause. But Stanton did not come up big in this playoff. And while he did help us through those rough summer months, I'm afraid that this guy has never played under the pressure and the lights that shine as bright as New York City. It's one thing to be the MVP Sad. down here in Miami when no one's watching. It's another thing to do it when the lights are shining very bright. And we saw him come up very empty in this playoff in very, very, very crucial circumstances. Just take three straight pitches and a strikeout, just whiff at balls that were horrible. Yet last night, his his big strikeout in the ninth inning, that could have been an opportunity for him to earn a strike. Oh my Instead, God. Well, absolutely. He's, he's being bashed all over the, the New York media today for not coming up big. Yeah. And we're talking about the highest paid player on the team. Yeah, no, he the epic fail, man. Epic fail. There were many though. There were many. They we did not play clean defense. We did not uh, we had we had errors. We had throwing errors. We had uh El Gary errors, problems, yeah, no, issues. And, and you know, as great as our lineup is, it, it it relies too much on the two or three run home run. Yeah. When it matters most, we can't string together two or three hits and just steal a run here or there. No, we do not play a small ball. Home run in the context of, hey, that's great, is fine. But when you're trying to hit home runs, man, it doesn't work out. Well, the same thing. Look, it, it, it happened in the ninth inning. El Gary got a hold of one, and it was about four feet too short. Unfortunate. Breaks didn't go our way. Aaron Hicks hit that long foul ball. Just... Oh, look, and the reality is that our team, as as – young and talented as it is, it really does not match up against, obviously against Boston this year, and even against Houston. If those, if Boston's three and four starter did what they did to us in these games, imagine what, we, what would happen against Verlander and Cole. Yeah, well, it can't be much better than what they were. You know, what are they going to do? Shut us out? Like, we scored one run. We, we, we totally, we totally whiffed. That we were not yeah. good. And yet somehow we had a chance to win the game, which is just mind boggling. We got bested in every single aspect of the game, top to bottom. They outmanaged us. They out base ran us. They out hit us. They out defense us. They out pitched us. They did everything better. And yet El Gary hits that ball one millimeter higher and it goes out. It's insanity. Watch out for the Yankees next year. We'll be back. All right. What about uh, what we else? Will be back. What else? That is for sure. No, we're going to be back. It's the, the no doubt. Watch out. We could go on a two or three World Series run, and then they will they will fear us. They will hate us. What about um? And you know, people are enjoying it. And good luck to uh, the what Red Sox beating the Astros. Uh, how about the MLB? Yeah, playoff continues. The Yanks are out, but great series coming up Houston Boston and on the other side Who do you side, like? Who do you like? Dodgers, I think the Astros yeah. are going to get them. I think the Astros are going to get them. I think I they're... genuinely you know I will be honest with you as I during the Boston series I was telling someone who was touting how great Boston is and what great baseball they're playing against us. I'm like the team that really scares me is Houston. Yeah, Houston's going to go back to back, man. Their bullpen is is a little suspect but so is Boston, but their lineup and and they have starting pitching just unreal and so i think houston has a very realistic chance to be the first team to win back-to-back since the the yankees in 98 99 yeah no they definitely they definitely have got a great team and it starts off with a total shutdown pitcher verlander yeah what are you gonna do the guy's back on the nectar and it's completely resurrected his life it's totally well he never really went away but it's helping him out but kate upton she's definitely well, he had a little bit of a down period there and that's why detroit ended up trading him because they felt he was getting old and he wasn't worth the money but uh you know i gotta tell you he 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 really he hit one out of the park with uh with the with kate yeah she's and fantastic he, he, he i saw a story where he credits her as resurrecting his career well let's say you know what there's something to that because you may remember when 
um, A Rod had his big breakout playoff series. He was on the Nectar too. He did. He was. He was on the also named I, Kate. I can't remember her name. Kate Hudson was, was it Kate. Another Kate. Yeah. Kate Hudson. There's right. some. You know what? There's something to this. We need to do more in depth research. <laughs> Maybe it's got to do with the Kates and not the Nectar. Right. People <laughs> named Kate. Women named Kate. Something to think about. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, Kane's back in sale. Kane's, I love you. Kane's, uh, my favorite movie. Kane's FSU. Kane's come back. Huge victory. Oh, that was great. I got to tell you, Saturday from mid-afternoon on, I guess, from the second half of that game, or, right, what was the final score? We beat FSU 28-27, right? 20, yeah, right. No, 20. no, no. I don't even know what you're talking about. I, I was busy at the beginning, and I, I couldn't watch that. I, I started watching, you know, like, full-on, in the second half. And as far as I'm concerned, the score in that game was 21-7 because that was the score in the second half. I understand. And isn't that when it matters, really? Like, so, nonetheless, we all played them, beat them 21-7. That leads completely into the Yankee game, which started off with Aaron hitting a first-inning home run where we whoop Boston in that game, too. And it really, it was just such a Saturday night. It was great for me. I, I got to tell you, it was the best night I've had in a long time. Well, that's wonderful. But I think everybody's you know, very happy know, for you. They turned out to be kind of depressing. But nonetheless, we move on. The Hurricanes played great against FSU. I know it was a little closer than everyone likes to see and so forth. But you got to remember, these are rivalry games where kids that are playing against each other have known each other since Pee Wee League. And as whenever FSU is down and we're good or vice versa, that we're down and they're good, it's always a close game because this is guys going at it like it, like against their brother. And so they try even harder than they would against any other. This is their, their essentially their championship game in a season where they know they're not going anywhere. But the Hurricanes came through and the turnover chain came out and it was like rocking and rolling down here in South Florida. The turnover chain. What is with that the stadium, backpack? What is what with that the... T- is on is like... It, it it it's reminiscent of the old days at the bowl. Oh yeah. No, well they, listen, the new Hard Rock Stadium has got uh character and that's was important. Joe Robbie Stadium and is it sitting, looks great on T V too. You should see it in person, walking up to it at night. It is a it is a spectacle. Now I really well, I've think... not been at night, but I have been to a to a day game uh, last season, went to a couple games and, and I have seen the new stadium and it's so much better. That whole little canopy area Thing. While it's not air conditioned, it it's it was definitely necessary because that sun beating down on you in that stadium was unbearable. It really is. Yeah, wow. For those of you that have never spent been down here, first of all, it's October. Oh, it's October tenth today. It's super hot and humid out there, like you wouldn't believe. I was at, I just came from baseball practice and I was schwitzing out there. No mm-hmm. joke. I felt like if I was in the sauna. And it's one of the guys who, who is not fr- from down here, one of the dads was like, hey, man, it's October. Like, what's going on with this heat? And I'm like, oh, you, you think this is bad? He's like, when does it cool off? And I'm like, oh, well, we'll get a couple of days in December, maybe a couple of days in January. And he looked at me like if I was crazy. And I'm like, well, well you're the one that's crazy. Doesn't know you moved to some place that you have no idea what the weather's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but listen, it is what it is. It's actually gonna, you know, the 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 edge will come off of it, uh, coming up. No, look, I'm not, look. It's super soon. hot out there, but I, I'm not complaining. I I love it. I I I work indoors. I turn on the air. If it's too hot, I turn the air colder. No big deal. Yeah, just don't go outside. Sim- simple as that. Just the That's reverse. It. The reverse Stay of indoors, winter. People. The reverse of winter. You guys all got the heat on. Uh, we have the air on. That's it. And it gets nice. In November, you can go outside. At 5 o'clock, it's fine. At uh, 9 no, in the morning, no, it's fine. No, no, by the end fine. of this month, the humidity will be gone, and it'll be nice. It'll be nice. That's yeah. it. This is the time of year that the, that the snowbirds come down. And why don't you come down and get some tickets to Ford Championship Weekend? Email me, Joe, at WFORadio.com to be in the running for the tickets to Ford Championship Weekend. Joe at WFORadio.com. All right. I'm headed to Charlotte, North Carolina tomorrow for the Carolina Nationals, race four of the NHRA countdown. Steve Torrance was on the show on NHRA Nitro. He told us why he doesn't do interviews at the track anymore, which was interesting. Tanner Gray was on the show. He told us why he said that he didn't feel like, uh, you know, certain racers in Nitro have the talent to run pro stock. 
Robert Height was on the show. He told us why he didn't come on the show a week ago, that his collarbone was actually broken and uh, he wasn't sure he was going to be able to race. And so he went into radio silence. Uh, so it was a big WFO Nitro show that uh, the the stars of the sport like poured out their hearts and gave real you know genuine insight into what their situation was. So after this show is over, definitely want to get on that. Now we're on the home stretch. Absolutely, Giovanni. no. I heard Steve O saying that he has plans on being on for the next three after the next three races. I, I was going to say next three weeks, but I know it takes a little longer than that. Yeah, it's I I would say it's over the next. Uh, four, four to five weeks, but he plans on being on over the, after each of the next three races. He said that that he's penciled us in, and I thought that was great. Number one, number two. Qu- quick thing about while I understand the whole height thing, you know, like that's uh, as a regular person that covers other sports, that would never happen in another sport where a, I guess essentially a number one competitor a top dog got injured and had to have surgery and it was just like quiet, like completely undercover and no one knew about it. Yep. I I got to tell you at the same time, like that's one of the things that keeps NHRA from being able to be out there exploding. Like that whole secretive silence thing that just, that would never fly in another sport. Well, that's a great, discussion point because uh, I, I heard about it top to bottom um, from multiple and look, angles. No, and look, I understand from their perspective and all that, but you know, it's almost like that that kind of stuff is the kind of stuff that keeps keeps the sport from being well from being legitimized. Exactly. No, but it is legitimized. But you no, know, it's legitimized. It's just that um, it would have been a discussion point. And when you choose, like here's the here's the choice, okay. Um, Let's go back. If, and this was their concern, if the word gets out that Robert's got a broken collarbone, then there will be a lot of speculation about whether whether or not he is fit to drive. Should he drive? Can he drive? Um, you know, who will replace him? All of these discussions. And the team decided that they did not want that to happen because they deemed it a possibility that someone may make a call or he not be cleared to drive and then their championship hopes are over. OK, and so that's why they made the call that they made to keep it private and secret and not talk about it. At the same time, they deprived the fans and the media of a week of Robert Height talk. Right. And that's what all these sports radio stations and uh, Internet chat rooms and discussions and friends debating. They are constantly doing that about other sports. Because there are so many media outlets, you can't possibly keep anything secret. By the way, things are kept secret. You just don't know exactly what they are because they're still secret. But believe me, there's stuff, right? There there are things that we don't know what they are, um, etc. But it would have been interesting to have that discussion. That would have been a whole week of NHRA talk amongst NHRA fans that didn't get to happen. Because they were protecting themselves. And I totally get what you're saying when you say it. Because you got to have something to talk about. And they held it back from us. Well, and that's the thing. Like, we're accustomed to covering the other sports. And, and that, uh, to me, that's just something that would never, it just, it, it would never have been able to be kept under wraps, first and foremost. Well, no, there are, there are football players that have injuries that keep them secret. Derek yeah, Jeter, somewhat, Derek not, Jeter as a Yankee, not like, Derek Jeter as a Yankee yeah, was hurt I'll, often I'll and kept that. it a secret because what specifically Derek Jeter was hurt a lot and he never talked about it. He kept it yeah, secret. One, you know, there's, are you hurt or are you injured? <laughs> right. This guy had surgery is what you're saying. He had a surgical right. procedure. He got injured. Yeah, that's, that's true. He might've been out. You know, yes, I know Aaron Rodgers can have a concussion and all of a sudden he's magically practicing on Thursday again. But but this is like, this is serious stuff. And you know what? Best of luck to Robert. And I get it. I just, I felt like if that was, to me, it was like, it was a sign of, of what it is that doesn't allow NHRA to, to blow up. 
as like we like it to, like it should be. NHRA is the only motorsport. Well, all right, that, that this is this is not factual checked or anything. But as far as from what I could tell and from what I've seen roughly and what I can recall off the top of my, my head, it is the only motorsport where the ratings are actually on trending upward, where the crowds are trending upward, where it's on the way up. It's not leveling off or losing 10% of the audience year to year, every race. No, I agree. I agree. That's, that's what we're saying. That's our story. Yes. So we are trending up. You, you know, you want to oh, do everything, From what everything you can do online and on Twitter, the ratings are, are, you know, again, nothing matches certain sports, but unlike, you know, the other round the round kind of racing that we watch where every week we hear about record lows, NHRA is improving week over week and year over year at the same tracks and, and just getting out there and being available to more and more people. Well, it would have been good, uh, but they did not do it. And I understand but why. In the end, they're protecting it's preferable themselves for Robert to be able to stay in the car and run for his championship, than have speculation ruin everything. I, I get that. And I, you know, I get it. Look, I, I understand why the Patriots, you know, win all the time and they're not very good with the media to begin with. So we can just leave it at that. There you go. There you go. All right. I am a uh, sports collision. How about your Miami Dolphins? What happened this past weekend? Well, I didn't watch uh, the game. Um, I know that they lost. And, you know, what can you say, man? That's two in a row. They had they did have a lead. And you tell me what happened. Was it total incompetence? Is this it? You know, unfortunately, they are who we thought they were. If we had said at the beginning of the year that they would be three and two after five games, that or you know we would have said, yeah, hopefully if things break right, they'll be three and two instead of two and three. And they're three and two, but it's disappointing because they started out three and zero. Oh, but the three and zero oh was a fraud, and I tried to tell you a few weeks ago. And it's not that it's a fraud; it's just that here it is in the end. The Dolphins, the first three weeks, didn't beat themselves. And the last two weeks have completely beat themselves. Unfortunately, Ryan Tannehill is exactly who we thought he was. He's just, he's just a guy. He can't, I was discussing this with my coworker a couple weeks ago when they were 3-0, and and I said, hey, he's looked great, but when it comes down to it, can he be the difference in a game that we need someone to make a difference and him win a game? And he just hasn't been able to. And last week, someone needs to tell this kid that it's okay to throw the ball away and live to fight another down or even punt it away. And that's exactly what happened. The O-line had an injury. And the second half, Cincinnati turned it up on defense. And he was running for his life. And on a couple of those runs, he made ill-advised passes. One of them caromed off a defender's head, off of uh, somebody's helmet. And bounced back to a one, you know, big fat guy who caught it and just waltzed into the end zone. And you know, there's nothing better in the NFL than fat guy running for a touchdown. And it happened twice. One time was a, a further pass downfield than a legit pit si- pick six. But the second time was essentially where protection broke down and he tried to throw a pass and it hit off of somebody's helmet and it got caught by one of the big heavies in the, on the defensive line. And the guy just strolled right into the, into the end zone for like 10, 15 yards and two pick sixes. And the team lost 27 to 17. If you take away 14 points off two pick sixes, they could have won 17, 14. Well, there you go. Bummer. And that's it. The Dolphins disappointing, but they have shown life and hopefully they, you know, again, we went through the season. I, I predict, you know, seven and nine, nine and seven at best. Anything else in the world of uh, mainstream sport that we need to cover? We've been very, well, there's stuff going on locally. Miami, I don't know how the rest no, of the no, no, no local there's stuff. There's a whole big spiel going on where the NBA has started and they're, they started their preseason. And there's a big thing where the, the heat have been trying to get Jimmy Butler who has, has been playing in Minnesota and he, sh- you know, the, the trade, has not come through, but Butler showed up at practice today, and apparently he played with the third team and just annihilated the first team, led the third team to annihilate the first team in practice and was, like, shouting stuff at the general manager 
telling them, you know, you you bleeping need me. You guys can't win without me. Wow. <laughs> Pay me or get rid of me. Wow. And yeah, well, you know, he kind of turned into an alpha on them there, and it, I hope that the Heat can pull the the trigger on this trade and bring them down because while some people are calling him out for this, I think it's a sign of, of him showing his superior talent and the heat need a guy like that in order to get back to, 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 to prominence. And so NBA is starting up. They're already starting their preseason. The NFL is in full swing and MLB playoffs have reached uh, the championship series. The, uh, you know, college football, everybody loves their regional, what their local college team. And, Everything's great there, too. And as I look through, I don't really see too much. I know, oh, here's one. Oh, I'm glad I remember this because I wanted to bring this up last week because I got an email from the Yahoo. You know, the, you remember the, that, that site that used to run our fantasy league? Yes. Well, apparently those bozos who got rid of our fantasy league, I get an email asking me to join their Yahoo NHL fantasy league. And I, I got to tell you, I have not been offended by things more than that very recently. Like, what crap is that, dude? You are head into NHL fantasy. Who in the world even plays NHL fantasy? All right? And you got rid of our fantasy NASCAR league? I cannot believe for one second that there is any interest in that, much less more interest in, in that than the hundreds of thousands of NASCAR fantasy players that there were because we've seen it. We were part of their league and we saw the raw numbers. Whatever, Completely man. offended. What, 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 yeah, but you know what? Fantasy Racing Cheat Sheet has done a great job for us. So let's just and it has, happy. and thank you, Mr. Fantasy NASCAR, and thank you for, you know, providing us with a place to, to play our fantasy. But I just wanted to call Yahoo out on that because I had been so offended that they got rid of the league that I got rid of my Yahoo email and I never go to their site anymore. Now, mind you, I did forward that account to my new email because they're, you know, I haven't been able to like reach out to everyone so that I could continue to get important messages. But I have slowly integrated myself into the new email and I don't even go to that site anymore because why should I? It's just that simple. I, you know, that's what happens. That's the way that I let businesses know that they have mistreated me. There is a gas station right here in the corner, about three blocks from my house. That would be the easiest place for me to pump gas. But when I first moved in here, I used to pump there. I had a couple of issues. I reached out to the manager. Nothing happened. I saw the owner one day. I let him know what was going on. Nothing happened. So you know what I do? I don't pump there. Just that simple. You can't have my business. You don't get my money. So Yahoo, you have been excommunicated from my life, and I hope that all the NASCAR fantasy players and everyone in our audience slowly integrates out of Yahoo and get with the program. Go to one of these other sites, any of them. Just don't go to people that don't support the things that you support. Just that simple. There it is. Simple as that. Very good. Very good. All right, one final thing. Did you see Jimmy Johnson got well, uh, Cole Pern uh, a bunch of little bicycles? I did. I thought that was very funny. That uh, was funny. Now, hopefully they donate them or give them to kids or something, but yeah. He said they could buy I, I think that was the whole point. They gave them kids bicycles. They so. gave them kids bicycles. Great stuff. All right, you got a final thought because that's it. It's time to head to Charlotte. Um, final thoughts. No, not really. You know, it hasn't been... I'm, I'm happy to see myself in third place. Um... In the fantasy, I'm making a dash to the front. I don't want to talk too much until I take the lead. Other than that, it's been it's been great. It's been it's a great time to be a sports fan. All kinds of great action going on all over the place. That is so true. So true. Yeah, bummer about the Yanks, but whatever. You want to see Lowe's uh, Red Sox win it for Low? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'd rather give a finger. You know what? I my, my I don't mean I don't mean the number one salute. I mean I would rather donate my pinky than than see the Red Sox win. I my opinion is this. Um, you know, first of all, it's totally out of our control, so there's no point in it. Well, but I, I would rather obviously. see Low. I would see you rather see you or Low or Bobby's Bug Barn or somebody step up and win the fantasy league. That's what I that's what I want to see. 
I'm a little concerned well, about that. Happen. Mr. Fantasy NASCAR is coming on strong. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, you know, I got in that league, and they claim to be tough, but I won it in my first year, and I got my name on the trophy. You know, like, wow. Wow. Come on, <laughs> WFO League. Wow. And so who holds? who stands between us and that fate? And the answer is right. low, you, Bobby's Bug Barn, and a couple other select, you know, Black Falcons, a couple of other select fantasy players. Uh, because well, this guy's Craig, a fantasy Craig league. Newhall, yes. He's been trending down, but 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 he's right there. Black Falcons, Uper, and I would say Elephant Racer still has an outside shot. I mean, these guys are still all within two hundred points. And Millerman is ninth at two oh two back. Yeah. And and at that point it's with only what what is there six races less or five? Yeah. At, you know, you this can weekend. still do it. I think anybody at 200, right around that 200, if from day racing who's 210 back on up, you still have an outside chance. The reality is that we just can't let Mr. Fantasy NASCAR win. That's it. That's yeah. all that matters. Which, by the way, if he wins, it's not the end of the world. But, man, he just comes oh, in and no, schools but I everybody. Mean, like, I, what's I mean, up with that? I mean, for gloating purposes. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to crap yeah. on Mr. Fantasy NASCAR no. in any way, shape, or form. Exactly. Exactly. We don't take you know, crap on anybody. I don't think. Well, there's some people that I don't mind, you know, dropping stuff on. Well, all right, Gio. Excellent work. Appreciate you calling in. And everybody, well, this, all is, right. this is the conclusion. How about a winner? Do I got a winner this week? I, I think I'm undefeated, right, so far? I, I mean, I know I haven't picked a winner every week, but. Okay. Let's hear it. All right. I've got. I really want to take. All right, here we go. I'm going to give you two two picks this week, all right? There's an early game, 1 o'clock. The Colts are at the Jets, and the Colts are getting three points. It looks like if you want to get in on that action, you better hurry up because I think that the, the number is going down. But they're getting three points right now, the Colts at the Jets. And everybody, you know, we saw the Colts get whooped on Thursday night football against the Patsies last week, and, and the Jets actually won a game. But I think that the Colts are going to outright money line win right there, the Colts. And then you're going to take that money and you're going to double down and drop everything. I'm talking about the mortgage, the kids' college fund, everything on whatever the line is. It's three right now, and I think it's going to trend up. It looks like it was going to three and a half, maybe higher. So if you want to get in, just do what you got to do. But the Patriots on Sunday night are going to annihilate the Kansas City Chiefs. So there you have it. Two picks. You got the Colts plus the points, the Patriots minus the points. You're going to take everything you win with the Colts in the afternoon at the 1 o'clock game and drop it double on the 8 o'clock Sunday night game on the Patriots. And you're going to be thanking me when we get together next week. Wow. I, well, I'm, that's, Send your that's prediction a full prediction. Geo at Geo in Miami at gmail.com. Okay. There it is. There it is. All right, Gio. There you have it. Excellent work, excellent pick. All right, everybody, that's going to do it. I'm headed to the Carolinas, Carolina Nationals, Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're coming out to the track, by all means, come say what's up, yell WFO. Next week, we'll be back in the studio. Things will be normal, and we'll get after it again. Giovanni, great job, WFO. Thank you, WFO. I don't know that they'll be normal. Say hi to Rich for me, and enjoy the races, everybody. See you next week. WFO, everybody. WFO! The views and opinions of the hosts, guests, or callers do not necessarily reflect that of the station ownership, advertisers, or agencies. Yeah, welcome to the party. Bye, bye, bye!